In the UK and other so-called developed countries, generally speaking, you'll find that men earn more than women. This is known as the gender pay gap, and we hear about this every November here in the UK on Equal Pay Day. But in this video, I'm going to show you that there's a, a bit of a twist to this gender pay gap when it comes to black women and black men here in Britain. So stay tuned and let's dig into this. These graphics are taken from ONS data, Office for National Statistics data, looking at the gender pay gap in 18 ethnic categories here in, in the UK. Amongst white workers, white British, white Irish and other white, men earn more than women. Then we look at the Asian groups, you see that all in all of those groups, Chinese, Indian, other Asian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi, the men earn more than the women. I'll skip, skip right down there to the other ethnic groups, men earn more than women, although any any other ethnic group the gap isn't that big then you've got the mixed or multiple ethnic groups again in all of those cases the men earn more than women with some big gaps actually between the mixed white and asian men and their women mixed white and black african people again men earn a fair bit more than women do for mixed white and black caribbean it appears there that the there isn't much of a pay gap there and then we look at the black demographics there. You'll see that African men on average earn a higher salary than the women. Other black and other and Caribbean however you see it's switched for black Caribbeans and other black people in the UK, black other people in the UK, the women earn more. And if we look at some other data, we see that this isn't some flash in the pan year. You know, it hasn't just suddenly happened in that year that black Caribbean women were earning more than black Caribbean men. The Fawcett Society in 2017 published a report called The Gender Pay Gap by Ethnicity in Britain. They give some fascinating historical data. For example, we see that for black African women, the pay gap between them and black men narrowed from 16.6% in the 90s to 4.2% in the 2000s, but then increased to 5.4% in the 2010s. And you can see it on the image here, it's not super clear to see, but basically you're looking at the green and the purple bars. That shows you the, the full-time hourly salary for men in the green and women in the purple there. You see their big gap in the 1990s, then in the, two, in the 2000s, still a gap, but it got smaller, but then the gap lengthened there between black African men and black African women with the men earning more in the 2010s. Now look at the, look at the chart, the equivalent chart for black Caribbean men and women. In the 1990s and in the noughties, the 2000s, black Caribbean men and black Caribbean women were basically earning the, the same. And then you've got there in the 2010s, you find that, again, look at the green bar, that's the male average salary. It's actually, it's actually a little bit lower than it was in the 2000s, whereas the women, black Caribbean women's av av average hourly salary, gosh, it's kind of hard to say, hourly salary, went up actually. So in the 2010s, black Caribbean women were earning 8.8%, 8 .8%, they say 9% more than black Caribbean men were earning. The figures that we see from 2022 are part of a generalized historic trend. So why this reverse gender pay gap amongst black Caribbean specifically? This report shows us that 31% of black Caribbean women were in managerial roles versus about only about 22% of black Caribbean men. And then whereas 19% of black Caribbean women were in intermediate roles, only 8% of black Caribbean men were. So why is that? Why are a higher proportion of black Caribbean women working in these higher paying roles in comparison to the black Caribbean men? Well, that goes back to education, which I've been talking about a lot over this last several weeks. Black Caribbean girls have for many years been achieving higher educational grades than boys. This is a chart that I've made based on data from the Office for National Statistics looking at attainment eight at GCSE. The blue bar is the boys score, the purple bar is the female score. Now you'll see here, across the board, girls score higher than boys do in all of the ethnic groups. But what you'll see there, first of all, you'll see that the overall scores are higher for Chinese, Indian, white Irish, and the lower end, right at the bottom, are black Caribbean, white and black, mixed white and black Caribbean. You've got white British there as well, quite close to the bottom, and then white and black African there as well. Again, I've talked about the ESN scandal as being one, not the only, but one of the key 
factors to explain the consistently and persistently lower educational attainment on the part of black Caribbean children. Check that video out if you haven't already done so. Something I want to point out here is that the gap between boys and girls is much higher amongst black Caribbean boys and girls in comparison to most, uh, most other ethnic groups. So whereas the gap is around about 10% for Indian, Bangladeshi, Chinese, white, Br uh, white British, it goes up a little bit for Pakistanis, 12% for Pakistanis, and then you've got 15% 15% gap there goes right up to 15% gap for black African and white and black Caribbean meaning that girls score 15% higher on average than boys do for those two ethnic groups then you've got right at the top the biggest the biggest gaps between the performance of boys and girls are amongst black Caribbean the boys score 20% less than the girls do which is a bigger gap than all of the other ethnic groups another educational factor which follows on from this gender educational attainment gap if you want to call it is that a much higher proportion of black Caribbean females go to university than black Caribbean males do so whereas 56% of black Caribbean females that were educated in state schools had started university by the age of 19 years old only 34 percent of their male counterparts did and this is in the academic year of 2021 and 2022 again there's a gap for all of the other ethnic groups but again the biggest gender gap is between black caribbean males and black caribbean females 34 percent of black caribbean males went to uni had gone to uni by the age of 19 in that year the only other group the only group who's got a lower proportion percentage there is a related group the white and black caribbean boys only 30 percent of those only one in three of those went to uni had gone to university by the age of 19. you look at the black african that's 63 percent of males went to university compared to 34 percent of black caribbean males and then even amongst the females as well there's a gap there so 56 percent of black caribbean females had gone to university by the age of 19 versus 80 percent of black african females so i think it's pretty clear why it is that on average black caribbean females earn more than black caribbean males do it's because a much higher proportion of black caribbean females are in the higher earning roles managerial roles that kind of stuff and that is because the higher proportion of black caribbean females go to university in comparison to black caribbean males and black caribbean females attain much higher educational outcomes at gcse level and presumably and at presumably at a level as well i think this opens up something that doesn't get talked about very often when it comes to issues to do with the black demographic here in the UK. There is a very, very pronounced gender or sex split between the outcomes for the males and the females. This is something I really want to dig into more in future videos to understand what is going on with our black boys, black Caribbean boys in particular, but also black African boys. And what can we do as parents, as relatives, we're all related to a black, to a boy or a girl, you know, black boy, black girl. What can we do? What's within our, our power to do to, to turn this situation around so that we're not basically setting ourselves to, up to be some kind of underclass in this country, perennially lower educational achievers, perennially low earners, perennially low homeowners and so on, disorganized, you know, fragmented and all that sort of stuff. We need to deal with this and we need to try and understand the root causes and address them. That will take some awkward and tough conversations, might make some of us feel kind of uncomfortable, but listen, we've got to do something. There's no point in, oh, we're comfortable and, and, and happy while we're sailing our way to, you know, becoming some kind of underclass in the UK here. But let me know your thoughts on this as ever. I'd like to hear your experiences from education in particular. If you're a boy, what was it like for you what do you think are some of the key things that happened in in those teenage years that resulted in in you or some of your peers performing so poorly in comparison to the girls and if you're a parent as well i'd love to hear what kind of strategies that you're employing to kind of make sure that your children don't get caught up in this general trend all right take care of yourselves make sure you watch this video here which youtube will recommend and also this video here which i think works well in, co in collaboration with this particular video and i look forward to seeing you soon again all right take care peace